Hi there, this is my channel, Jaru Walks. In the year 2024, I will embark on an epic walking journey across the United States. My plan is to walk 8,000 miles across the U.S. three times, via the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. In the hiking world, this is known as a calendar year triple crown, and has only been completed by a handful of people in history. I plan to post weekly updates along the way, so you can join me for the journey. Okay, I'm working my way up Kinsman Peak today. Um, the plan is for it to be a 16 mile day to do it all in one day. It's kind of like a climb, I don't know, to something like 2,500 feet and then it kind of flattens out. I mean, it's never flat, but kind of flat for like 10 miles. And then something like six miles up and over a 4K peak. And the question is, am I gonna hit snow before that peak? I think I will, but I hope that I don't because it'll help me go a lot faster. Um, but yeah, day two of the whites is man, it really feels like I'm not feels like I'm truly walking and stepping as lightly as I can. Like I'm on eggshells because when you break through, you know, if you did it with a lack of care, you really could hurt yourself. And so it's kind of unpleasant walking today. This is just incredibly slow moving. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty much at this point, more snow today, you know, typically one to as high as three feet deep. Um, and I'm, I think I'm now moving below one mile per hour. Uh, this is very slow progress. And this is just the first smaller peak. I have a 4,000 foot peak coming up after this. So just making note of how it's going so far, it's only, uh, I think I started around 7.30. It's around 12, 15 p.m. right now, and I've only come four and a half miles. This is the first section of the trail where I've seen truly no footprints at all whatsoever. Um, and it's definitely become the sketchiest portion uh, so far. Coming, I'm like on one of two peaks today. I just came over the top and I'm coming down, so I'm moving a lot faster coming downhill. Um, but yeah, near the peak back there, the snow had bunched up to like three feet deep and you're just post holing through it and you'd try to step out of your post hole and then the next step just became another post hole and I was like grabbing onto a tree and it was uh, a dead tree a killer tree um, a small one a mini killer uh, and it started to fall over and I was like okay well I'll have to figure out another way to do this so I just fell into a mud pit that went down above my knee level um, I fell through the snow with both feet all the things to slip into. I didn't think I would slip into a mud pit. Trekking pole. See how deep that goes? It's got such a reflection you can't see, but it looks like it only goes down two inches. That's dirt there, but watch. If you step in the wrong spot, it just, there you go. That's shallower, but man, that's crazy. From this angle, you can maybe see what I mean. It looks like it's two inches deep.
So I was working my way across what I thought was a bridge, but it turned out it was a log. I had my legs on either side, and I just fell over and then into the creek. Uh, legs first, luckily. Um, yeah, trying to go that way. Again, you have no way to tell how steep that is, but that is steep. First view out a little bit, because I'm coming straight up. Again, that's like, I don't know, 10 feet down there. Back there is about 50 feet down, so going straight up. I came from back there, and then the route that I'm going is this way up that and then along the ridge that's the south peak if i understand now it. that's a post hole i got lost there for a minute but i think i see the white boys up here yeah i do This is the monorail where the snow melts on both sides and all that's left is the ice path from the foot travel. It's two bunk houses that have 40 people and apparently since it's Saturday, I talked to the guys that are making breakfast this morning. I think there's actually 40 people here. Um, and so I woke up this morning in the, on the floor of the, the canteen area. Um, and the way it works is there's two people per day who can volunteer for breakfast or for dinner service and they get a free stay. So it's two hours of volunteering and then everyone else pays whatever the fee is and I still don't know what the fee is. But I asked him, I, I was quick to wake up early before anyone this morning at like 5.45 and sure enough, like right just before six people came in, um, came down. And uh, so anyway, I was quick to introduce myself to people just to make sure that they knew that I was there, you know, not just like lying on the ground like a total bum. Uh, and they were super nice and told me that uh, they had a few cancellations and so there should be enough food f to include me in on everything. And I think they were saying I wouldn't have to pay for anything, which is really generous of them, but I was definitely offering to. So anyway, this is the AMC hut. Walk it in through the side. Everyone in the hut this morning, I found out I was with a church group from Canada. And apparently they're gonna jump in this lake. So I have to see this. Oh, how's it going? Oh wow, over there. Meanwhile, these ducks are just hunting. This is just over here. I came over here to change real quick. this river here and the people across the river are as confused as I am but I think I see the way Alrighty, I just bought 17 donuts I think it was 17 I don't even know how many it was at Dunkin Donuts so I think I'm gonna eat like five of these right now and then pack the rest no snow so far but to be expected based on what I've seen so far the southern slopes are more exposed to Sun in the afternoon and the snows melted way further down. 
So, yeah, I'm hiking up uh, Franconia Ridge, the south face right now, and I met two people who basically gave me, like, I guess what you might call in the climbing world uh, beta or whatever, right, yeah. for everything that's coming over the next uh, <laughs> Garfield Ridge Trail day or two. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and so when I looked at the map, my sense was that once I get over Lafayette and then down into that kind of, like, notch area, that that was going to suck, and they basically just confirmed that for me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but as we were saying, like, it's better to know beforehand so yeah. that once you get Expect there, it. you're not like, what's wrong with me, right? Sugar, you sugar yeah. up and get <laughs> yeah. out of yeah. And, uh, what are your, so you both have trail names, right? So what were your trail names? So uh, yeah. Molly, but yeah. uh, party girl from class of 04. So she hiked the AT. And, 20 years uh, ago. 20 years ago in 2004. Still yeah. out here three days a week. Party girl. What's the story of the trail name? <laughs> um, it's... Uh, not worth getting into. Not, it's <laughs> a long, the video is not long enough. Okay, no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm Teal Goat, so I'm yeah. what's called a, uh, I've done my grid, my White Mountains grid. So I've hiked every 48, 4,000 <laughs> footer yeah. in New Hampshire every month. So now I'm working on my second one. <laughs> Wait, we say every month. What do you mean by that? So I've done yeah. all 48 yeah. in January, February, March, April, May, June. Oh, holy. How long did that take you? Uh, First one was eight years. This yeah. one hopefully will not take. I'm already like 30% through it. Yeah. And I haven't even, I'm just it, like, yeah. I'm just walking. It's uh, so 500. <laughs> so you've done them 12. Is it, did I do the math right? You've done them 12 times. So I've done one. Yeah. 576 one. mountains. I've done each holy one at least cow. 12 times. Yeah. So there's 48 mountains in New Hampshire over 4,000 feet. I know from experience now, it's the magical number of 4,000. Once you're above it, the whole weather system and everything changes. They're actually scary. Like, people who live in Colorado think, like, 14 years old, you know, like, 4,000 is nothing. These mountains are not like the Come mountains on, in Colorado. Come on, it's still 3,000 gain in yeah, Colorado. Yeah, because you, you started, started 10,000 feet. No, for sure. So, number one, like, the elevation change is basically the same because you're starting at lower level. But still, the weather out here is so insane, yeah. right? You know, so, again, I think people think because it's not at 14,000, it's not as sketchy or dangerous but it's like a big deal to hike a uh, 4,000 foot mountain out of here but anyway so you did uh all 48 and in each month so that means that uh that took uh eight years yeah. <laughs> eight years eight years, <laughs> eight years of and luck. 576 summits yep, five, yeah six, yep. amazing that's, that's so cool number so anyway i couldn't have run into any two better people to uh, <laughs> scare me for what's ahead but they didn't actually scare me they no, gave, it's me, exciting. gave me You're love yeah, it. good advice so <laughs> For yeah. Sure. yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, so nice to meet you guys. Yeah, Thank you. Great to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I wanted to catch them on video real quick was just to show people how cool the people in New Hampshire are. Like, you run into these people, they're very direct, but they're very kind at the same time. But they have this kind of like no nonsense attitude, you know? And uh, like the people here love hiking. New Hampshire, the entire state is covered in mountains, which is why you don't meet very many people who are from New Hampshire. And if you live here, it's because you love the mountains. Why else would you be here? It's a kind of a hard state to navigate. Um, and so anyway, those two people, uh, as I said, one of them had uh, through hiked the AT uh, 20 years ago. And the other one has summited every one of the 48 peaks above 4,000 feet in every month of the year, meaning there's 12 months in the year and they've done all 48 peaks in all 12 months. So they've done 48 times 12 summits. And then you have to consider January, February, March, even April, and sometimes May and December and even November are nasty. Like especially December, January and February. It's like a war zone up here. Uh, that's crazy. And I'm just saying like, those are just two of the people I met. And like, I've just, you cruise along the peaks and you get up there and you're not alone. There's like, you run into five or 10 people while you're up there on some of these peaks, like Musalak. I met this guy, Nick, on Musalak, who's an awesome hiker, super friendly. Just all the people out here, like to me, this is a strange comparison, but it reminds me of the state of Oklahoma where people are, if you've lived there or been there, very direct, but at the same time, very kind and no nonsense. Uh, and in New Hampshire, people are very direct and kind and no, no nonsense. And so, you know, just a, a funny comparison for you out there. I think most people would not be able to make sense of that comparison because very few people have been to both places. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's it's an accurate statement and New Hampshire is just a fascinating and amazing state and I feel like the energy those people had like their enthusiasm captures the essence of how these people are and as I'm 
going throughout my day, I have all these special moments where I'm meeting people along the way and I'm obviously not filming it because I don't really want to intrude on their space or just to the moment of reality. But since we were just kind of passing briefly there and they were such open-hearted people, I figured they wouldn't mind and they didn't. So we just did a quick little thing. And anyway, I hope it comes across from that video because to me that's intended to be kind of representative of all the people I've met along the way through New Hampshire. Uh, such a cool state and cool people. I think this is where we kick off to the Franconia Ridge, or at least Franconia trails this way. And I see the white blaze there. So those are pretty fun. Especially in micro spikes, it's hard to decide when to take them off. You can't take them off too early or you fall into this game of you take them off and you put them on and you take them off and you put them on and you start to go crazy. So I'm almost to the hop top of a little haystack uh, peak and I got an amazing view behind me so I came if I understand correctly along this ridge line which I think is Franconia Ridge and uh, the direction that I came from from there was roughly like something like I think down the back side of that it may have been actually this ridge I'm not sure but it's along this ridge line and down you can see like the road off in the distance So a quick kind of look. So I, from behind me is Mount Lafayette. I'm gonna go down this way today, down along that ridge. And then that mountain right there is uh, Mount Garfield. And then I'll go up and over it. And then this mountain back here, I think is like Twin Mountain. And then I'll go along this ridge line, I think over to here to Mount Guyot. And then from there, I'm gonna come down. So like, get my hand out of the way, like up and over that ridge line coming down behind it. Um, and then eventually I'll make my way to the Zealand hut, which is 14 miles out that way. Um, and then from there, way off in the distance, that big peak, there's three or four mountains that are hidden behind this twin mountain back there that I'll have to go up and over. But then that is Mount Washington, uh, which is, uh, I think the second highest elevation mountain. Uh, I always get this wrong. There's one in the Smokies, and then there's Katahdin, and then there's Mount Washington. But that's the that's the mega mountain there. That's the one that has the crazy weather, the killer weather. This hike is one of the most majestic things I've ever seen. Like, there's just certain things that. They're all in that ethereal, magical realm, like the Grand Canyon, uh, the Mokion Rim. And this hike is one of them. Unbelievable. But I'm telling you, there's no way that this camera even captures how it feels like to walk this. It's so big, and you're on this ridge with views everywhere like the world has just never felt so big whoa i 
knew that there would be snow. I was saying, like, I thought there'd be snow on the backside of this mountain because it should be in the shade. And then, uh, party. Ow. See? So a quick recap of what I've done today. Uh, I believe I've hiked those peaks back there, but if not, I hiked along a ridge line that led up to this peak here, which I think is Lafayette. And then probably right about here on Lafayette coming down is where the two feet of snow started. And then I've hiked through you know, one to two feet of snow all the way down this ridge here, and then up this mountain here. Uh, now we have a beautiful sunset, so I'll get my finger out of the way. And then I'm not quite to the peak yet. You can see this platform up here, uh, but it's up and over. And then it's a steep down, and I have to go through another valley and then up another peak. So maybe when I get up there, I can show you what's up next. Coming down that, and I'm going with it. The, you can see over here, the trail on this side of the mountain is just flooding with the runoff. So I've arrived at the Gale Head hut, which is closed right now for the season which I knew in advance, uh, but I figured that I didn't want to stay at the last shelter because it wasn't far enough down the trail and I would like to proceed further, but it just kind of got late and um, my power bank, which I was carrying, died unexpectedly. And so there's a outlet that I found here at this hut. I literally walked all the way around the hut looking like, you know, a burglar for uh, an outlet. I walked, it's a big hut, I walked all the way around it, and it wasn't until I came to the last wall on the outside that way down there, there was a little wooden box, and it's heavy, and I lifted it and I opened it, and there's an outlet in there, and so, I don't know if you can see or not, but my cable is there and it's charging stuff, so, uh, that was a lucky break. You just don't get any respect around here. Right, quick update working my way up the south twin this is eye level that's looking up now that's eye level and that's the slope i'm calling that 60 degrees i'm just going to keep shooting these eye level shots because it's the only way to represent it for the galehead hut i wasn't able to locate water. I didn't really look that hard now that I think about it, but I did try the two spigots and neither one seemed to work. Um, but I had a liter of water here from the last spring and then I had like a Coke bottle half full, but then I have, uh, I drank through that relatively quickly. I think cause I didn't drink that much last night. Um, and so anyway, all I have left is this and I have seven more miles to go. Um, so I'm actually going to melt snow water right now, uh, to get extra water which I literally packed this on the rare chance that I might need to melt snow for water. My concern more was that the snow is so thick that the creeks and streams could be covered. Um, but that was more or less not the case, which is what I expected, but this was just to be careful. But anyway, there's a shelter ahead, like a mile ahead, that's almost an entire mile off the trail. So that's two miles round trip, which is a long way to go just to get water. Um, and then the next water though is not for seven miles. So I don't know, I'm trying to debate which way I wanna go with all that, but all I need to do is just get this water melted um, and then I can chemically treat it in here. So I think this is probably the best bet. When you're melting snow is you actually don't wanna pack this up all the way. You start with a small amount in there, let it liquefy, and then you add slowly to the uh, existing water. It'll melt faster when you do it that way. I learned that. Uh, when I was starting out on my southbound attempt, um, moving my way through Canada, I watched some YouTube videos on it and learned from trial and error myself. Just quickly documenting my plight with these post holes up here. The sun is out enough that the snow's starting to melt and it's starting to get sinky. Um, yeah, no fun. That is, Look at that, it's off of a boulder. I basically just stepped off of a boulder down about four feet through the snow. I found a tiny 
snow melt spring. I'm loading up on water. Showing you what the highway junctions of trails look like up here on top of this peak. So that's the trail I was coming down the AT. There's another trail connecting here. And then this is the AT here. And you can see because the trees are so tightly bunched together on you, you know, uh, it's important to know what you're doing to follow the signs carefully or monitor on your GPS carefully because, uh, it, yeah, it could definitely, I don't know, maybe get confusing. Just one more thing. I want to show this. So coming down a steep hill, there was previously snow here, like not today, some other day. But now imagine, you can see how it looks intact. And then look what happens right here. That's a boulder that's roughly level with my hip, okay? That's three and a half feet tall. In between those boulders, if there were snow there, compacted, but it's only three inches thick, you step on it right there, and then you slam through to the ground three and a half feet down. So I just did like the dissection earlier of like how you fall through, you know, into these post holes up to your waist when you step off of a boulder uh, and then there's hollow snow. So that just happened. I'm just going to film and show you what this looks like. Look at that leg. Now look at that post hole. I'm just like complaining so much right now. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to like relay like how much of a struggle this is. This reminds me of when I was hiking the hills in Georgia and I had sprained my left knee and like the hills were just like, <clears throat> you know, like there's little leaves on the ground. You're like, your, your feet slide out, your feet slide out, your feet slide out, your feet slide out. You lose your balance on the right foot, the left foot, the right foot, step on a rock, turns over, roll your ankle, fall into a tree, bang your head into a tree or something. Like, like <sighs> that sounds exaggerated, but I'm telling you when you're hiking on a sprained knee, like your left knee doesn't work the same. And therefore you lose your balance all the time because you're protecting the knee from getting further sprained. And so like, it literally felt like an aggressive bully, just like grabbing you by the back of your neck and just going huh, huh, like that. And like, I know that I'm uh, kind of heated right now, but I'm telling you, that's what it fucking feels like right now. And anyway, like you're going down this hill and the snow is melted. The top one to two inches of the snow is melted. So every time you put your foot down, it's like you're sliding, you're sliding. There's no control. And look at these rocks, look in between them. When you break through where your foot goes, it's crazy. It's, I mean, it's so frustrating. It's funny because it's not that it's physically as exhausting. It's that as you're walking, you lack control and you, you, you like, it, it's just, it, yeah, it's that. It's that you're not fully in control when you're walking down this hill. And so... I'm going, as I, I've put it before, when the hill gets aggressive with me, I go aggressively slowly back. You know, it's like, you wanna, you wanna shove me that way? Okay, I'm gonna move one-tenth of a mile an hour. Like, I don't care, I'm going down this hill if I want to. You know, obviously if it's literally insane, I will back out on something. But like, this is like on the edge of that. It's like, it's so frustrating. And I'm not angry at the mountain. It's just, it, it feels like a person is bullying me right now down this hill but it's the mountain and it's not the mountain it's the fact that i chose to be out here but it's still like yeah just i don't even know what it is it's frustrating you know what makes this waterfall particularly cool is how the water like spills flat like a sharp angle this way and then it gets jammed back the other way boom boom and look at the velocity of that the force of that as well with the you can see like it comes down here and then over down here and then over and then back it's like zing 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 